Time the vice president's tax proposals might have a dramatic impact on investors. Our Robert Frank has some numbers for us this morning. Hey, Robert. Good morning, Carl. Well, Vice President Harris proposing to double the tax on capital gains and taxing unrealized gains for the very wealthy. For a tax on unrealized gains for those with a net worth of more than $100 million. So that would call for a minimum tax of 25% on unrealized gains. So even if you didn't sell something and it gained in value during that year. So they would be taxed on any annual increase in the asset or value, again, even if you didn't sell. Non-tradable assets, like a private company, very illiquid, they would be taxed at the last valuation event plus some annual increase. When you look at the tradable versus illiquid rules on this, there would be a lot of unintended consequences. Like, for instance, you know, David, this would be interesting on the deal side. You'd get a ton of take privates. Because if you're a private company or a liquid asset, you would defer those taxes over the life of the asset. Whereas if you have tradable stock, that could be marked to market every year and you'd pay that tax. So there are lots of questions, lots of complicated details that would still need to be worked out. Welcome back, everyone. To tax and realize gains is crazy. And to pay for money that you have not made is so bizarre. But a lot of billionaires are exploiting this loophole. As journalist Lee Fang said in this tweet, there are reasonable problems with the tax on unrealized gains ideas, but the problem demands a solution. The people in the 10 plus billion dollars range of wealth pay nearly zero income taxes, borrow till death, then heirs get a cost basis reset to pay zero capital gains. Bill Ackman, the famous billionaire hedge fund manager, replied Lee and came forward with a proposal for taxing these unrealized gains. So the goal of this video is to break down exactly why this issue exists, explain what Bill Ackman is recommending as a solution, and whether or not his proposal has a chance at success. Imagine that you own a painting that you bought for $10,000, but now it's worth $50,000. If you were to sell that painting right now, you would owe taxes on the gain or profit of $40,000. But let's say instead of selling, you decide to take out a loan using that painting as collateral. You can then use that money however you please without having to pay taxes on the gain yet, because technically you still own the painting. This strategy is known as deferring taxes, and it is one way that billionaires can significantly reduce their tax bills. And unfortunately, the current US tax code doesn't currently address this particular loophole very well. Bill Ackman got some thoughts on how we could tighten things up and make sure that everyone pays their fair share, even if they haven't quite finished cashing in on their investments just yet. The way to fix this problem is to make borrowing an amount in excess of your basis in a stock taxable. In other words, if you have $10 billion of stock in a company you founded with zero basis, loans secured by the stock should be taxable as if you sold a like amount of stock. So, for example, if you borrowed $1 billion, you would have a capital gain of $1 billion. This would be both fair and practical to implement. But before we get too excited about Bill's ideas for closing the unrealized gains loophole, there is actually an interesting legal debate going on over whether or not loan proceeds should be considered income when it comes to taxation. Traditionally, income is defined as anything you earn or gain that increases your overall wealth. But when you take out a loan, you may end up with some extra cash in hand, but you're also taking on a new liability or debt in return. And since the two balances each other out, some lawyers believe that the cash itself shouldn't count as income because it hasn't actually increased your net worth. Anyway, this proposed tax won't actually make it into law anytime soon because this law targets a very narrow group of wealthy people, which may limit its appeal and support among lawmakers and the public. Also, conservatives are likely to oppose the tax on the grounds that it could create a lot of economic problems. Gains that exist only on paper could force people to sell assets to pay taxes, which would destabilize the market. Especially in the tech sector, you have people sitting on large, long-standing embedded capital gains. And so for people to understand what this means, it means you have to pay taxes on sales that you have not yet made. And even forget the stock market and think about even everyday Americans across this country. That means that if you're a farmer or if you're a small business owner, you will owe taxes with cash you literally do not have in your pocket to pay those taxes. That is a formula for a second Great Depression. And it is something that's been in the bloodstream of democratic policy for a long time. Go back to Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders' plans of a wealth tax, even in the 2020 primary. 
I think this idea is here to stay for the Democrats. And the best comments on this came from Buyback Capital. Kamala tax plan, pretty brilliant. You now have billionaires proposing to close tax loopholes to avoid taxing unrealized cap gains. Maybe she isn't a complete fruit loop. Finally, I hope you found this short and concise video helpful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on taxing unrealized gains. Are you for or against it? Thank you so much for watching.